Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, I wanted to pop on here this morning and talk about renewing your mental health. I posted a question the other day that kind of just gave me a little brief, um, you know, I don't know, I, ideas on kind of what everyone's struggling with, with their mental health. So um, I do want to start off, you know, talking about like, I used to struggle with this a lot, um, my mental health, and I want to bring out just a few things that I personally started doing in the beginning that really helped my mental health, but then things that, you know, off your answers to my question, like how you can also start renewing your mental health as well. So when I started on my mental health journey, um, it kind of really played off of um, fixing my diet and then implementing movement, some physical activity. So that is actually where I started transforming and renewing my mind. And um, that helped a lot. And throughout the, the years, my mind and my body and my soul just felt so much better. But also, I have I got to a point where um, the exercise and the food wasn't the the last tool I guess I could say so even though I had repaired a lot of my mental health and it was starting to feel a lot better there was still a little bit of something missing I was still struggling mentally um, with bad dreams and thoughts intrusive thoughts and um, you know just things that I felt like my heart was really still struggling with and the fitness was not going to fix it. That therapy was not going to fix it. The food was not going to fix it. There was something else that was missing. And so I had to find that. Okay. So this, this is going into, let's see, my journey began in 2012, um, December of 2012. That's when I really started shifting into a 180 and going the complete opposite direction. Um, from where I was, okay? So what I started out with, if you are not here um, yet, the first two things that you wanna start doing for your mental health is for one, you need to start feeding yourself better. You need to have some self-care, okay? You need to start implementing foods that not only, okay, so your gut and your brain is connected, okay? So if you are feeding your gut trash, you are going to get trash. And that's just the truth. And, and there's so many toxins and chemicals out there and you're putting them into your body and that those chemicals, they react as chemicals in your body. So if you are not feeding yourself medicine, you are going to have sickness and you're gonna have sickness in your body and in your mind. So that's number one. If you're not there yet, you need to start switching out foods. Now, this does not mean going on an extreme diet and um, <laughs> starving yourself, even though fasting in some um, instances would be helpful, but you should just start replacing things with better options. So for an example, if you're eating just the cheapest ice cream you can find on a weekend or whatever, then you need to make sure that you're choosing a better option of ice cream, picking a higher quality brand and just start that way. Just start switching to higher quality foods, no matter what it is. Um, even if it's a bag of chips, if you're a chip eater, fine. Like don't just throw it all out right away, but you can start adding in better brands of chips that are higher quality, that have better ingredients and start um, breaking the addiction to these really high toxic junk food and start implementing better quality until you're completely out of it. And that's actually how I started my journey. Um, I started switching over to healthier, healthier foods until I started getting real basic with my eating um, and then transferring over to whole foods. So basically, I weaned myself out of the addiction and started replacing into better foods. And now I'm here um, a long time afterwards. And, and it's a lot better and simpler diet that is ancestral based. So it has been a journey and you don't have to go cold turkey and then fail, but you can start implementing better options for your um, gut health and your brain health and your physical health. So I would start there. Self-care is going to be huge in your mental health. You will start to feel better almost like immediately after a week or two of it, you will start feeling better. Another thing is physical exercise, okay? Um, that was the second tool in my toolbox is I just started moving. It's, it's another aspect of self-care. You need to get the toxins out. You need to get the bad emotions out. When, 
when you push yourself to a hard level of fitness, there are emotions that come out. There are thoughts that come out, okay? You have to move through these things. And this is part, this is why people say like fitness is therapy because it really is. It really does um, start to move things out of you. And if you compare, if you combine it with the diet aspects, you will have such a huge transformation with your mental, physical, and soul health just there, just starting there. So that's my second tool is just get moving. Um, I started with yoga and some light jogging. That's what I started with. Um, then I started playing with weightlifting and then I got into CrossFit. So it's kind of morphed from there and I just found more things that I enjoyed. Don't do th something that you're just totally struggling with because that's not going to enhance um, your issue. It's not going to make it any better, right? So just start with something simple. Um, maybe it's just going on a half mile walk. Maybe it's um, just playing around with some weights. It doesn't have to be serious. Just get some movement in. Maybe it's doing Pilates off of YouTube. It does not have to be serious when you're starting out. It can just be fun and joyful. Just care for yourself, okay? So those are steps one and two. Now, I went with just these two tools for a long time, and it really changed me um, overall. I was reading some um, like psychology books and some self-help books, and that really did help with my mindset. I was listening to um, some podcasts that were uplifting or motivating or um, you know, music that was uplifting or motivating. I was just trying to feed my mind good things. So I would say that tool three, is just um, starting to renew your mind with with feeding it good things. So your mind soaks up information. It is it's uh, it's like eating food, right? When you're watching something, you're basically feeding your mind food. So really pay attention and have some awareness on what you're putting into your mind because. The more things that you're feeding your mind, that stuff's going to reflect outward. Those are the things that you're going to think about, whether it's music, the TV show, people that you're listening to. Um, surround yourself, surround your ears and your mind with things that will help you get better and stop um, feeding it toxins, stop feeding it negativity, stop feeding it um, trashy soap operas, you know? So really start to think about what you're feeding your mind, okay? So these three tools really navigated um, me into a whole different person. I was not the same person uh, using these three tools in particular, but I did find that I still had a few issues that I could not get out. Like there was, the, it, the root of the issues were not totally cut out of me. So um, eventually after some things happened in my life, and I just posted about this in my blog, if you keep updated on my blog, I'm going to start sharing a lot of different things there to help you guys, but spiritual health. And um, spiritual health is something that we all really neglect when it comes to our mental health, but there is something there and you are not going to be able to replace it with anything. I promise you, you have to have a connection to something that is bigger than you, period. And so the spiritual health is really what cured it all for me, what um, really pulled up all the root issues out of my heart and out of my soul and started totally renewing my mind where now I just I occasionally I have some negative thoughts, but it's just not there anymore. Like I, I have um, like thankfulness and gratefulness and love and um, just a different mentality about things. I don't go to a negative world right away. I actually go into a world of prayer, of song, of how can I make this better, um, of saying I'm sorry, um, you know, just asking for forgiveness, even with my kids, like, man, like, I shouldn't have yelled at you. I'm sorry. Let's talk about this. Like, totally different mentality. So that is really the missing piece, I think, that everyone is struggling with. If you're still doing all these self-care things, like you're taking care of yourself, you're eating well, you're moving, you're feeding yourself positivity, um, making sure that you're not watching things that are breeding negativity in your mind, if there's still something in your heart that is messing with your mind, it's probably a spiritual aspect. And so as I go into these things that you guys answered on that mental health post, I want to I want you to keep that in mind that 
really it comes down to a spiritual issue. And a lot of us want to neglect that. A lot of us want to avoid that because it's something um, that our busy lives do not uh, accept, right? Our busy lives don't have time for that, right? And so that's why we are told and we are challenged to be still and know God, right? And when do we have time to be still and know God? And that just comes with, honestly, discipline. And that's with discipline with everything. That's with discipline with eating well. That's with discipline and being physically asked or <laughs> physically, um, you know, fit or moving or showing up for a job. It's just self-discipline. And um, like I said, we feel too busy to have gods in our lives or we feel too prideful to have God in our lives. But really, he's the answer to all the deep-rooted issues that you can't get rid of with anything else. So as I go into these things, um, I just want to, I'll just go through my list that I have written down here from the question and the answers that I got. So one thing is self-love, and we kind of talked about that. So, um, you know, people say, I just struggle with self-love. Really, what does that mean? And I think what it really means is, is self-care, you know, you're you're lacking um, happiness. You're lacking, you know, taking care of yourself. You're just lacking taking care of yourself. You're focused on taking care of everything else, which is good in some aspect, but you're just totally neglecting yourself. And so when it comes to self-love, I think that you should honestly just be focusing on the three tools that I mentioned before. You should be focusing on what you're feeding yourself. Are you moving? Are you taking care of yourself? Um, are you spending time... Um, you know, in the silence and really making sure that your heart is clean and clear, right? So self-love, I feel like, can lead to the bad side, right? Where there's, it's vanity and there's ego and there's all about the self. And we're like, screw you if you're, if, um, you know, you're not, you know, vibing at my level, if, if you're not taking me to the next level, like that's the bad side of self-love. And I feel like our society is definitely there for the most part. So we need to keep that in mind that there is a healthy self-love and then there is an egotistic self-love and not to cross that line. We need to be, um, you know, self-caring and self-loving in a way that would honor um, our family and God and not really sacrifice people in the process. Like there's no love there when you do that. That's not the way that we should go about it. Now, should we hang out with, with, um, people that are affecting our lives in a negative way? Um, no, not if they're going to remain in that and um, they're not going to change their ways and they are dragging you down. I'm not saying hang out with them. That's not what I'm saying. But you can still love and care for them in a way that you know you love and care for yourself, right? Um, so self-love is essentially self-care. Yes, you should be taking care of yourself. You should making sure that you are healthy, that your mind is healthy, that your body's healthy, that your soul is healthy. So um, with your mental health, like I said in the beginning, that will definitely help um, caring for yourself. Guilt. Um, I definitely struggled with this for sure. Um, not only did I do so many things in the past that I was totally guilty for, that I could not forgive myself for, um, but honestly, I found forgiveness uh, with God and also being repent, re repenting not only with God, but like saying I'm sorry to people that I knew I hurt. Like I, I went and I said, like, I'm sorry for doing this. Um, and I prayed to God a lot about things that I've done and asking him to forgive, forgive me. And so then there comes a line that you actually can be prideful in a sense that, you know, like I deserve punishment and you think that, you know, um, your standards are higher than God. So you have this pride aspect and you won't let things go after, after you've asked for forgiveness and God has forgiven you. So if you legitimately repent with a sorry heart and, you know, and you start to, and you, you have turned away from, from doing whatever that guilty thing was. You've never done it again. You're not going to do it again. Like it is in the past, then you should also forgive yourself because God has forgiven you. And so as long as you're not continually repeating these patterns, um, then you should not have guilt over it. But if you are continuing these patterns that are making you feel guilty, um, one of the things that has helped me, and this comes with momhood, right? So 
Um, we're definitely growing as parents, when, especially when you begin. And I notice that, like, I don't like to be, if I'm busy, I'm snappy and I hate it. I hate when I'm snappy. I hate when I um, develop anger because I'm trying to do something and then there's chaos over here with my kids. And we all do this, right? So, but I learned so much through this as well. Like, I felt so freaking guilty at the end of the day. Like, man, I wish I would have loved them more. Like, why did I handle it like that? Like, I felt so guilty. And so this is such a huge teacher, though, because at the end of the day, I can reflect on what I did and I can wake up the next morning and do it different. And I will tell you, uh, the biggest tool with doing this is I got really, like I slowed everything down. The busyness was causing the stress that made me snappy, that made me want to um, just react instead of reflecting on what's going on and and really thinking about like a long-term situation with my kids, right? So, um, so instead of like getting snappy now, because I've made my life slow down, I've made it where I'm not so busy, I can be like, okay, so they're fighting right now. Okay, what are they fighting about? And I can ask them, okay, what are you guys fighting about? And then, um, and then I can I can just handle it differently because I'm not just on reaction mode. So guilt um, can be from, you know, reacting in a way that we don't want to, and we continue to do that. But guilt, what guilt does is it leads us to, um, it leads us to do better. It drives us to get closer to God, right? So we don't want to keep acting in a way that makes us feel guilty. We actually want to progress, right? We actually want to get better. And so the way that we can get better is reflecting and then and then doing better, reflecting and making a different decision, slowing our lives down, making better decisions. So guilt isn't to, you know, be this awful burden, this dark burden upon us. It's, it's to bring us to reflection and to um, ask for forgiveness and then correct ourselves. So if you're hung up on guilt, I don't know what you're personally struggling with, but please feel free to um, message me and let's, let's chat about it. Let's chat about what you're guilty about. Um, and maybe we can come up with a plan to really like think through, um, you know, these actions that you may be taking. So, so that way you can move towards a, or progress, you know, towards something different, something that you wouldn't feel guilty about. Um, like I said, if this is something in the past, like ask for forgiveness. If you need to go to the person to ask, ask for forgiveness and clear your heart, like go do that. Um, but you know, know that, know that you don't have to have, you don't have to have the pride over it. Like if you believe in God, which I hope you do, then he will forgive you and you should forgive yourself. If you're not doing that, that simple thing anymore, if you're not doing that thing that brings you guilt. Okay. So just let it go and do better. Um, reflect and do better every single day. It's just like any kind of other discipline. You have to show up and make an effort to do better every single day. And eventually you'll be out of it and you will be guilt free. Um, another thing is, let's see, regrets. So that kind of goes with guilt. Um, and this, this person particularly said not progressing. So like I said, um, you just have to show up and you have to be and you have to be disciplined in doing better. What? No. <laughs> but you have to show up and be better. And that just takes discipline. It's, you know, like when it comes to eating, it's not having the food that you can't control yourself with in your house. Get it out of your house. It's an addiction. Um, if it comes to um, you know, quitting in your exercises, stop quitting, make it a little bit easier for yourself so you can actually complete it and then build on that. If it comes to, um, you know, not getting better at your career, maybe you should study more. There's, you can make yourself better. You can progress, but it really has to come down to the discipline and not giving up on yourself. Um, and I think that's the key really is I think a lot of people get to the, the hard parts of everything and they, and they want to quit because, well, it'd be easier to quit. Right. Um, but really you can just slow down. You can, you can change your pace. You can, um, make, 
your knowledge base better so that way you understand things better. You can um, you just, just slow down. <laughs> I feel like that's been like the biggest key for me is just to slow down your life, slow down your role. Like don't be so busy and um, want immediate gratification because when we want immediate gratification, we feel like we're failing all the time when really we just need to slow down and take um better, more intentional steps to get to our goal and to progress in our life and reflect and journal and do all the things that will help us get to our, our next step and get to our end goal, okay? Um, let's see here. House cleanliness. So someone said that um, one of the things that really messes with their mental health is when their house is not in order or clean. And you know what? I'm going to say that's not really a bad thing because your outside world, and I wrote this in a blog post the other day, actually reflects your internal world. And that is legit. So if you if, if you have a bunch of clutter in your house and your, your house is dirty and your car is dirty and... And I'm not saying like it, it can't be a little bit messy. Like that happens, especially with kids. Um, but if you find that it's affecting your mental health. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's that you you got some cleaning to do. You got some organizing to do. You got some stuff to get rid of. Because our inside literally reflects our outside world. Like I know that I'm too busy and I'm not taking care of um, my surroundings if I'm you know, if there's clutter everywhere. If I haven't cleaned out the closet, like I'm hiding things away, right? And, or if my car is dirty, like that's my like mobile unit. That's a part of, of me. It gets me places. So if these things are dirty, if they're a mess on a consistent basis, um, it should, it should mess with your mental health. Like your, your inside, uh, needs some work. And I have found that whenever I clean my house and I get rid of things and I clean up my yard, I feel so much better, um, mentally, physically like the stress like kind of disappears like you do need to to clean up like when I walk and run down my, my road like there's freaking trash everywhere right now um like very soon as soon as I freaking remember because I always forget when I start walking is I'm going to take a trash bag and I'm going to pick that up because I do that every time I see a ton of trash and that's because I don't make it someone else's responsibility to clean it up like that's my responsibility whether I threw that trash out there or not and so you kind of start thinking the world like that. Like if I, it just, it's weird, but psychologically your internal world reflects your out, out, outward. And so you have to look around and see that as a task that's your responsibility that needs to be done. And it does affect your mental health. Like I don't understand why people throw trash on the side of the road, but it really freaking bothers me. So I go and pick it up because it's my responsibility. And I feel good doing that. Like I, I feel like I did my part, um, whether I made that mess or not. Okay. Um, so it's not really a mental health thing that's negative. So I wouldn't look at that as a negative, um, characteristic of you. I would look at it as you're doing your job. You're trying to leave it better than you found it. Um, and I actually grew up with that phrase because my dad used to post it on everything. But it has made such a big difference in my life because I take responsibility for other people's neglect of responsibility. And if really, if we all did that, then we would have such a better world to live in because we would have so many other things taken care of um, that are not getting taken care of on a daily basis. So overall, that's what I have. I've answered kind of what everybody was struggling with and I've kind of given you guys some tips on how to start uh, fixing your mental health. Um, but I will say real quick that your mental health really comes down to your mind, body, and soul in connection. They all need to be balanced out in order for you to have great mental health. So if your food is off, you're going to be struggling. If you're not moving um, on a daily basis to at least like relieve some stress and get some endorphins, then you're going to be struggling. Okay, you're if you're if you're lazy, you're going to be struggling. Um, if you are neglecting 
that there is a spiritual aspect of you, you're going to be struggling. And all of these things play a role. And you once you start to understand that balance and you really start to play into the balance, then you will see your world shift in the most amazing ways. I can't even really explain it to you. You'll have to experience it for yourself. Um, but these three things, like those three tools, mind, body, and soul, if you start balancing those out, I promise your world will change. You will not be suffering with anxiety. You will not be suffering with depression. You will not be suffering with being overweight. Your house will be organized and clean. It will be. <laughs> Even if you have kids, it will mostly be organized and clean, okay? Because you are living in a way that God wants you to live. You are living in a way that is healthy. You are living in a way that um, is self-responsible, is self-disciplined. You will not be living in the way of the world and you will feel so much better about it. So anyways, that's all I have. I have a meeting um, coming up with um, the church priest um, here soon. So I need to get going. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. And if you have any questions, if you want me to pray for you, if you want to talk about something, um, if you want to reach out to me about health, fitness, spirit, I do it all because it's a lifestyle. And um, I want to help you guys get out of this negative dark world that we live in and enter into the light as much as possible. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I look forward to chatting with you and getting to know you better. Bye-bye.